what's going on everybody this is DK Dynamite and hopefully some of you guys are still awake out there since the final update for the Black Ops Cold War preseason just went live on all platforms the patch is around 13 gigs on PC 14 gigs on all three Xboxes and about 23 gigs on both PlayStations the update is kind of big but does feature quite a bit of content that we are gonna be breaking down later on in this video and aside from that we also have new information about multiple trailers for season one some updates on zombies and skill based matchmaking as well as some other surprises definitely stay tuned but before we jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because about 80 percent of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed so make sure you guys get notifications every time i update you on black ops cold war now also be sure to use code dynamite if you plan on purchasing any control free products to save 10 percent off your order now is the perfect time to finally get those black ops cold war control freaks for the holidays and their link is of course down below in the description so earlier today was definitely a big day when it comes to news and information about season one we got a beautiful cinematic cutscene for the start of the season which i re-uploaded here on my channel since the cutscene itself was unlisted on call of duty's youtube channel for a number of hours hopefully you guys enjoyed that and i could say i'm already really invested in this post-launch storyline for black ops cold war and i'm way more invested in this than i was in the post-launch modern warfare story last year they're definitely making sure that everything stays canonized for all the warzone events this year so earlier in the season one trailer we got quite a bit when it comes to story a look at new maps and we got the official description for the season so as they officially said a trap has been set a cia safe house has been hit and an old enemy returns to get his revenge after storming an experimental nova 6 production site on rebirth island russell adler has made a powerful enemy in victor stitch kuzman the ex-kgb leader of the nova 6 program and stitch is looking to settle the score now adler and a cia strike team find themselves trapped and surrounded by a enough Nova 6 nerve gas to throw the world off its axis. So I'm loving this dynamic between Adler and Stitch, the brand new operator, of course. So it looks like Adler got revenge for his buddy Weaver, since Kravchenko, of course, took Weaver's eye out in Black Ops 1. So Adler is now taking one of Stitch's eyes out here in this new storyline. Now, Stitch, of course, is that brand new Bane looking operator. He looks super badass. And on top of that, we now know what the canon ending was from the actual campaign. So as we expected, the quote unquote good ending where Adler and Bell shoot each other is the canon one. So it does look like Bell probably died and Adler survived. We already guessed that Adler would survive the campaign considering he's a canon operator in multiplayer. But if you guys are like, wait a second, Adler's not in Black Ops 2, so what does this mean? So either they're going to kill Adler off at some point in the future with another season cutscene, maybe season 4, season 5. They could kill him off there or they can retcon events from Black Ops 2 and somehow rewrite the Black Ops timeline to eventually tell other stories with Adler in the future. I'm definitely really warming up to Adler's character. We'll love to see more stories told with him at some point in the future, so let's just see what happens with him. Now, it was also confirmed that this Thursday, December the 10th, we are going to be getting a gameplay trailer world premiere for Black Ops Cold War Season 1 during the Game Awards, and that of course starts at 4 p.m. Pacific, so I'll actually be live here on my channel to react to this brand new gameplay trailer world premiere. I'll do a bit of a countdown stream to the event, and then we'll watch it all together as we usually do, so it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys can make it, and I think we'll definitely be getting gameplay of not only the Rebirth Island event with the new map, the multiplayer maps, maybe even some gameplay of some of the new zombies modes, which we haven't heard much about, but I have some information on those modes that we'll get to at some point soon. Now, some other questions that were raised is regarding the Black Ops timeline. So, as I briefly mentioned, the timeline is in kind of a tough spot right now, considering Adler's role and whether or not he's going to get killed off before the events of Black Ops 2 are supposed to happen, but looking at the cinematic itself it does look like this rebirth island map takes place before the events of the main campaign since stitch himself mentions in the cutscene that him and adler met on rebirth island that's when adler interrogated him etc so i guess it looks like rebirth takes place before the events of the campaign but then the multiplayer maps like mall as we see take place after the events of the campaign at some point so let's just see how the timeline works they're gonna have to clarify some of these things at some point in the future definitely a lot of questions to be raised but regardless this rebirth alcatraz map definitely takes place before the events of verdansk for modern warfare now another reminder Reminder two, Rebirth Island is laid out exactly like Alcatraz Portals was from Black Ops 4. Yes, I know it's confusing, but they're just taking the same layout of Alcatraz and putting a Russian twist on it, and now it's Rebirth. I know we have a layout of Rebirth from the Black Ops 1 campaign that they didn't decide to use for whatever reason. Now, that's that, but we got a beautiful look at the Mall multiplayer map, and Ma 
ball, of course, has a very interesting Easter egg. So it, of course, has the same name, Pine, the Pine Woods Mall, similar to Back to the Future. So I guess it could be a bit of a reference, not only to the movie, but to the fact that we do have some time travel going on in a way with Black Ops Cold War. We have a storyline with the campaign. We have a bit of a prequel story with the Rebirth Island Warzone map. Then we have a sequel story to campaign with how Adler goes to the mall map to face off against Stitch. So maybe that's what that means, but definitely a really cool Easter egg nonetheless. Shout out to anybody in the community who first pointed that out over on Twitter. Now, the Modern Warfare Season 6 Battle Pass has officially ended as of tonight. The timer finally ended, and it didn't reset into a new season, but as Infinity War confirmed before, new updates will be added to Modern Warfare at some point, probably in the next week or so, maybe even with Season 1 of Black Ops Cold War. As a reminder, you can actually level up the Black Ops Cold War Battle Pass just by playing Modern Warfare Multiplayer, but there is a bit of content that is to be expected to release, which I think is probably going to end up being added in without the start of a quote-unquote season 7, so just wait up for that. But I guess you could say Modern Warfare technically isn't over, but it probably won't be getting another big budget season at any point anytime soon. Now, when it comes to the patch notes of this Black Ops Cold War update, let's get into that, and then we'll talk about the juicy details about skill-based matchmaking. So, taking a look at the brand new Treyarch blog post, they said it's almost here. In preparation for Season 1's arrival in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone on December 16th, today's incoming Black Ops Cold War update will include several quality of life improvements, stability bug fixes, game mode updates, weapon and score streak adjustments, and plenty more. This is our first major game update in the lead up period before season 1 drops and you can expect additional gameplay improvements, bug fixes, and more in our next major update for Cold War on December the 15th, so a day before season 1 actually launches for all players out there. So in addition to a host of gameplay improvements and fixes in zombies, this update also adds new season 1 intel to the Machina and Onslaught as a sneak peek of what's to come for Zombies players. So I have a big video talking about this intel from Zombies. I've had the video ready for about a day now, but I'll end up dropping the video as soon as I get an opportunity when there isn't some new information about Season 1. But look out for that video in the next couple of hours. I'll probably end up dropping it very damn soon. Now we have free bundles that we talked about the other day, which will become available later on today. We have the Field Research Bundle and the Certified Bundle. Both come with Epic Operator skins, weapon blueprints, epic reticles, calling cards, and weapon charms. We don't have images of the bundles, but they'll end up going live at 10 a.m. Pacific in a couple of hours from now, of course, and I'll probably post footage of these bundles over on my Twitter, and I'll maybe include it in a future video as well, in case you guys are interested in what these look like. But again, they're free. Now, we also got information about new playlists and game modes. So we have the Motherland Mosh Pit being added, as well as double XP with double weapon XP. So a part of this update, we're introducing our new Motherland Mosh Pit feature featuring TDM, Domination, Kill Confirmed, and Hardpoint on Moscow and Crossroad Strike. Hardcore Motherland Mosh Pit will also be available in Quick Play, featuring Hardcore TDM, Domination, and Kill Confirmed. Jump in starting tomorrow, and no worries, for Nuketown fans out there, Nuketown 84 is still available in Core and Hardcore Map List, and the Nuketown 24-7 playlist will return with a special twist in Season 1. We already know what that twist is. It's going to be a Christmas version of Nuketown, which is pretty damn exciting. First time we've ever seen that, of course. We're also bringing an extended double XP with double weapon XP to everybody in Multiplayer and Zombies, this Saturday the 12th until the start of Season 1. So that's your last chance to hit Prestige 3 and earn those Prestige keys before Season 1 ends up starting. So the update itself is of course live right now on all platforms as I said, and it features the following updates across all modes. So we have crash fixes relating to ray tracing, stability improvements, finally addressed an issue where Prestige levels and icons could display inaccurately in lobby menus, and they of course fixed the Prestige 1 icon, which will display in place of the Commander rank. Now now we have some UI fixes, and with multiplayer, we have that playlist we talked about. We have some camel progression updates. So we have an issue where mastery camels are not progressing properly for some players, despite being earned. I've seen that happen to a lot of people. Updates to some of the game modes, like Hardpoint for the map Checkmate, Garrison, Crossroads, Moscow. Got some spawn fixes there. More updates to Control uh, with Moscow, Miami, Checkmate. Also some spawn improvements. And with Fireteam Dirty Bomb, we have reduced spawn protection time to reduce frequency of protection nullifying explosives. So War Machine, for example, for extended periods of time. I definitely felt that problem not too long ago. Address an issue where players could collide when redeploying from a squad wipe. Uh, players could land on each other and die if they waited until they were auto-deployed. What the hell? Address an issue where players could get stuck by mantling in certain spots on Alpine. Uh, 
an issue where containers could spawn inside objects. That was stupid. I definitely had that. Uh, reduced spawn rates of Gunship, Chopper Gunner, and VTOL again. Now, they already nerfed that for the launch because it was hell in the beta, but they nerfed that again. That's pretty surprising. Also, an issue where the cruise missile HUD could be seen in the redeploy menu. Got some vehicle improvements, HUD improvements, and with party invites, along with uh, an improvement to combined arms with the interact radius on mounted turrets, and added options in custom games, score streak settings for score, reset on death, and score streak death penalty, allowing players to set the percentage of score lost on death from 0% to 100%, so that's pretty cool. Also an issue where players could be kicked for an activity while spectating in round-based modes. Happened to me at least once. We have some updates to weapon visuals, the Haro 77, launchers, optics, all that good stuff. We get some score streak updates now, so care package explosion will no longer damage teammates in hardcore. That was silly. Also an issue that could cause the care package to go through the roof in checkmate. Uh, I got an update to the combat bow, cruise missile, VTOL, and the chopper gunner. Now with maps, we got uh, an update to crossroads, armada, garrison. Again, this is all linked down below in the description if you want to read this in more detail, not the speed run that I'm doing here. And uh, some more updates with field upgrades. Got some of the stuff here with the uh, vehicles as well. And then some more general updates here at the bottom. A rare crash that could occur when a player was dismembered by an explosive. Finishing move updates, which were definitely pretty buggy. Some gestures, as well as an update for mouse and keyboard, audio, and miscellaneous as well. And then here when it comes to zombies, we're looking at progression updates with challenges, mastery camo progression, which all has been broken since launch. Not sure what was wrong there. Also some combat record updates as well as UI. But when it comes to D-Machina, they of course added season one Intel to discover. And I talked about this before. There was Intel that we just couldn't find because it wasn't there. So at this point in time, nobody has grabbed all Intel on D-Machina. But some people out there did quote unquote data mine some of the missing Intel. So we do know what's going on there, but that's in the Intel's finally available in D-Machina and Onslaught as well, and then some other improvements to gameplay weapons, some of the trials, mystery box, and then the main quest, here's a big one, address the rare issue that could cause the main quest to stop progressing at the decontamination step, and then moving on to Dead Ops Arcade, a surprising update with the Room of Judgment event, added various enemy AI tuning changes, and various weapon tuning changes as well. Now it's 2020, right? When have you ever heard of post-launch updates to Dead Ops Arcade? I think it's great that we're seeing that for Dead Ops Arcade. 3. It's of course probably being played a lot more considering there's a trophy behind beating it. I have a guide down below to kind of help you guys get an understanding as to how to beat it. Hopefully it helps you out but I think all we're missing now is a playlist for Dead Ops Arcade 3 that allows you to play permanently in first person. Added host migration, options to turn off various UI elements and when it comes to onslaughts there's of course intel now, uh, enemy padding fixes, and a rare issue that could cause a redundant perk to be granted from power-ups. And lastly with PC, more stability, and some other issues there at the bottom with NVIDIA. But that's it for the patch notes. Quite a bit there. Again, it's down below in the description if you don't want to deal with my speed run of most of the important details. But now when it comes to skill-based matchmaking, this is crazy. We've seen some interesting drama over the past day between other multiplayer YouTubers. So there's been controversy over some multiplayer YouTubers not admitting to be using a reverse boosting method to get their gameplays. And like I've always said, who cares? We all know they do. It. There's no way they're getting these lobbies where they're getting triple nukes without even being shot at once. We already know what's going on, but little by little, some multiplayer YouTubers are coming out to admit that they are reverse boosting, <laughs> and we have some interesting information from Tom Henderson about the state of skill-based matchmaking right now, and it's really interesting. So we have four facts. New creators have been doing it since Black Ops 2. No shit. You could buy hacked accounts in Advanced Warfare with 100,000 deaths for $10. The current joint session method has been going on since at least Black Ops 4. You can also reverse boost in Warzone. You'd be surprised who does it. And finally, just to add, I was made aware today that Treyarch, Infinity Ward, and Activision are aware of the current skill-based matchmaking controversy going on. I'm not exactly sure what this means, but I should have an update by the end of the week. So I'll keep you guys posted on what's going on with skill-based matchmaking, but here's what I think is going to happen. For the people out there that revealed how reverse boosting works in Black Ops Cold War, I wouldn't be shocked if 
it just gets patched and then all of a sudden there's no way to actually quote unquote reverse boost in the game because you have to remember skill based matchmaking in Black Ops Cold War is I believe just the same as Modern Warfare which means it's not just skill based matchmaking it's performance based matchmaking a very extensive version of SBMM that we've never seen before where it doesn't just track your KD but it tracks how you move in the maps how you shoot how you aim what's your sensitivity what padding do you take when you play on a regular map it tracks quite a bit of things so it's already difficult to counter that with reverse boosting so imagine if they nerf all these joint session glitches and exploits and all that shit it's gonna get tough it's gonna get a lot tougher for some of these multiplayer youtubers to end up getting their gameplays but that's just the way it goes i think the era of this pub stomping or reverse boosting may end up coming to an end with this game but that is about it this has been dk dynamite leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section what do you guys think about this big preseason update for black ops cold war and did the season one cinematic end up surprising you guys are you more excited now that you saw that and are you looking forward to the gameplay trailer this thursday i really hope you've enjoyed and peace out everyone <laughs>